If you're an AppCAD user looking for a brand new laptop in 2021, you found the perfect video. What's going on guys? My name is David Tomic and welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, firstly, thank you so much for joining me. On this channel, we talk about technology and architecture. As of right now in 2021, I'm a registered architect in the state of Western Australia. And today we are talking about the perfect laptop for people using Archicad. Now in particular, we're gonna be talking about Archicad 24 and the requirements of Archicad 24. At the same time, I'm gonna be taking into consideration the requirements for twin motion. So let's go through them one by one. We're gonna break this down into three categories. One, basic residential, two, apartment and office design, and three, high rise and hospitals. Basically starting with the low, easy to maintain jobs that don't require a lot of power all the way to the premium high-end jobs that require all the performance that you could possibly ask for and you should probably get a desktop. Okay, so let's start with basic residential laptops. These are all just recommendations. I do strongly suggest you go out and do further research before you select one. The first laptop I do suggest is the Microsoft Surface Laptop 3 with an i5 processor and 256 gigabytes of storage. The light, slim, ergonomic design with extremely long battery life makes it the perfect laptop for anybody looking to travel and do architecture or engineering at the same time. The Surface laptop comes in at 1,199 Australian dollars and it is up there in price. The second laptop I recommend for basic residential is the brand new M1 Apple MacBook Pro. Now I've started testing the Mac M1 and it is doing phenomenally well in the ArchiCAD software. I haven't started testing it for twin motion and rendering just yet, but for ArchiCAD alone, it is doing great. The MacBook Pro also comes in at 1,999 Australian dollars, so it is the same price as the Surface Laptop 3. We have a Windows and we have a Mac option now. The third and final laptop in this category is the Huawei MateBook. It is very powerful for what it is. For $1,272, I believe it is right now in Australia, it is very cheap and practical. It's light, it's powerful, and it can last a long time. So for $1,200, it is a good introductory model. However, I haven't tested this model fully, so I don't know if it is 100% compatible with ArcCAD and doesn't have any issues. However, being a Windows PC, I don't see it having too many issues. Moving on to apartments and offices. Usually if you're doing apartments and offices, you still have that luxury of moving around, traveling, and needing your laptop outside of the office. So these recommendations are truly based on versatile and portable laptops. Believe it or not, the MacBook Pro M1 boosted up to the 512 gigabytes of storage is the perfect choice here. The M1 chips are outperforming everything else I'm testing at the moment. A Mac mini is outperforming my desktop at the moment, which is incredibly surprising. So the M1 chips are truly showing their own in these graphic intensive programs. The price only goes up to $2,229, so it isn't a huge jump forward from its predecessor in the basic residential category. The next step up is obviously the Surface Laptop 3 again, but with an i7 processor and 512 gigabytes of RAM. It does significantly take a jump up in price to $3,449. Now I do recommend the AMD over the i7 Intel chip for the simple fact that the multi-core performance on an AMD Surface Laptop 3 is significantly better than it is on the Intel chips. Whilst ArchiCAD does run well off single core performance, it predominantly uses the multi-core stats. And finally, if the Surface Pro is too far out of your price range, the Dell XPS 15.6 laptop is the perfect choice. It comes in at $2,599. Now, having said all this and recommending these six laptops so far, I do truly believe that you need 512 gigabytes regardless of what category you're working in. Even if you're doing basic residential, I do recommend 512 gigabytes of storage just to make sure you don't undercapitalize. You really wanna be able to install as many programs as you need and not have to worry about deleting data off your laptop. Now, third and final is the most expensive category and it is absolutely ridiculous. Personally, I wouldn't buy a laptop if you're doing high rise or hospitals, for example, because they require so much power and it's just so expensive. So my recommendation is always a desktop, but if you have to purchase a laptop, I have two recommendations for you. Now, all of these have extremely long names because they're gaming laptops. So I'm gonna read them directly, not to screw them up. 
The first is the ASUS Republic of Gaming SCAR 4 G5 3.2. It has 64 gigabytes of RAM and an i9 processor. It is theoretically meant to be able to handle anything you throw at it. However, I do see this as potentially flawed because it is extremely bulky, extremely heavy, comes in at about six kilos and is constantly required to be charged because it is so powerful and draining so much power. The next laptop is ridiculously overpriced. It is the MSI G566 Stealth 10UH041AU. It also has an i9 processor, two terabytes of SSD storage, only 32 gigabytes of RAM. It does have a 4K display, but at the same time, it costs 5,999 Australian dollars. That is absurd. The desktop you see behind me only cost two and a half thousand for the tower itself, and then about another thousand for the peripherals. So if you went out and spent three and a half thousand on a desktop similar to this, you could absolutely obliterate any of these laptops. However, there is a purpose for all of these devices, especially if you are working on project files like a hospital. Hospitals can be huge and they can take up terabytes of space. So having something that has two terabytes of SSD built in might unfortunately be the only device for you. Anyway, that's all for me today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure you smash that subscribe button down below. Today, this video falls under one of my 28 videos in 28 days. So usually it'll be, I'll see you next Monday, but because it is February, I'll see you tomorrow.